everyone, welcome back to Build Tune Race. Today we got Salty back in the shop. Actually didn't want to start for you this morning. Got rich. Uh, actually fouled the plugs trying to fire this thing up. I missed it on the first try. Anyway, enough about that. It was a pain. We got it over here. And we also got some new parts to hopefully help Salty go faster. So let's get into it. So he's going to help me get these boxes opened up. Wouldn't you know it's a box. It's a good old QA1 coming in. Solid on this deal. We got all sorts of boxes in here. Oh boy. Oh, yeah. There we go. Got one. Oh, yep. And another one. And another one. <laughs> and another one. We got a whole nother box to go. But let's see what else we got here. Oh. A little uh, tool and some merch. And box number two. Some banners, yes sir. More boxes, more boxes, some hats, some more boxes, and all sorts of things. So we're gonna start getting these things opened up and show you what we got. So we got here is some new mod shocks. So these are the biggest, baddest QA1 shocks they got. And if you guys remember, at the end of the season when we went a seven and salty, the wheel's coming way out. I have everything totally tight and I still can't control the suspension like I need to. So I hit up our friends at QA1. They've helped out with Bernie. Now they're on salty and uh, these things are awesome. So one thing that's super cool with the mod shocks is so they have these packs that are actually changeable and you can change from like radial valving to no prep valving and do all sorts of different stuff. And then they also have this bleed screw here to adjust it even more. So these things have a ton more adjustment than what's currently on the car. What's currently on the car is Viking Warriors. I thought I had Crusaders, but they're, I think they're just the Warriors. So these are gonna be a huge step up and should really help us get down the track and be able to control the car no matter the surface that we're on. Okay, kind of what we have, but we got double this, is we have the piggyback shocks for the rear, and then the fronts will actually have a canister, so we'll take and mount the canister up. This helps get even more room within the shock for the shaft to travel, so that we'll actually have more travel with these as well. Uh, so all the way around, we're just gonna have way more adjustability. It's gonna be really interesting trying to figure out and learn to tune all of this because we have so much more we can do now with these, but that's exactly what I wanted because I felt we were limited before. I'm gonna use April's Jag for a second to show you guys this. So this is super cool. We also got the entire set. So shout out to QA1 for making this happen with us. If we can get this out of here. So that is another pack. So this, I'm not sure which one it is, but that's a pack, a set of packs. That's a set of packs packs and packs so we have everything we need from no prep to radial valving way more infinite amount of adjustment than i could ever imagine we'll have for this thing but these will go in the trailer or travel with the car and depending on the track to set up the conditions we can make this thing work so as you guys saw in the last video where i was weighing the car to possibly you know do no prep and put weight in the back we put weight in the back we'd swap to the no prep valve setup packs so what happens is you can the coolest part about this is you can just unbolt these five little bolts right here, pop that pack out, come over here, these will be already preset from the last outing once we get them tuned in, grab like say these are the no prep packs, grab them, insert them, install them, and then we're done. And then it's already set up. So we can already have a really good base depending on the pack we have in the shock and the shock and where it's set to go from like radials to no prep really really easily and that was one of the biggest coolest things and why i really wanted to use these qa ones on the car is to make ease of changing the car around drag and drive radio prep whatever we're doing we can have a cool set uh, we can have a great setup it'll take us a long time to kind of get that tuning set up but i'm planning on trying to use some of the information for qa1 and those people over there to give me a good base setup and then we can go from there they think we'll get a long ways with just one pack so who knows where we can go with a bunch of packs got one shock out working on disassembling it you guys are working on that right there we got to get that disassembled then we figure there's a little adapter and then on the QA1 shock I do not need the eyelet on the top so I already loosened that up we'll take that off put the adapter on it and then we should be looking pretty good working on getting this assembled we got the hat off the other one and then this is the adapter that we pulled off of the car and I took that eyelet off of this shock, so this will adapt it over to the F-Buddy stuff. And then, the old springs were 300. I And shout out to Scott, I sent him all the scale from our video and everything we did, and he figured out uh, new spring rates and all that that we need for the car. 
So now we have 275. So not a lot lighter, but definitely a little bit lighter than stock since we did get some weight out of this thing. So now we're gonna go ahead and get it assembled. You don't wanna fight in your life with some anti -C. So they're just working on getting that up in there. Well, this should be good. One thing that we changed too is now it'll actually sit up against the rubber stop up there. The old shocks kind of sat in a cup, which we thought would sit in this cup too that it came with, but is actually an F-body spring, so it sits in the rubber boot now up there instead of having that cup on the top. So we're almost there with this side. All right, guys, I gotta show you how much nicer this tool is over these knuckle busters for the old coilovers. This is super easy, just slides in and turn. Slides in, turn. Slides in, turn. Pretty freaking sweet. Way easier than using these because those would always slide off. So we're getting this uh, set up though, trying to trying to match our old shock length and get it close. So hopefully when we put it back down, right height will be similar. And there's one complete, looking pretty good. Well, I'm gonna end up probably hanging the reservoir right up in this area. So we'll see. I got these, it's called the, I got these flat mounts from QA12 that I think can go right there. And then the canister will mount in that. So we should be looking pretty good. Well, we're sitting a little low, but we can adjust it and bring it up. We kind of went with where we were at before to see where it ended up, but with the shock, it sets a little different now. Uh, now it's on to the back, buddy. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right, time to knock it back. This should be super easy. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Not wasting any time getting these bad units out. Should be done. This will be seconds. way easier than the front. Heck yeah. By the time you guys see us again, one will be out and the other one will probably be going in. <laughs> and now we got the rears ready going. So this is the coil over conversion on the F body. And I just did that. Got the spring set up. The spring is actually the same uh, weight that we had in the car. So these are the piggybacks. They'll go to the inboard of the troll arms. So I'll climb back up there and AJ will get them dialed in down here. Go, oh, got two shocks in. We did run into a little bit of a snag where it wanted to rub this bracket, which the other shock was doing that too. So we did a, did a little weight reduction to the mount. And now we should be doing pretty fine. So that's pretty cool how the piggyback just sits right here in this little pocket. And then we'll be able to, um, oh, now it's got weight on it. Just reach up in here, make our fine adjustments. We'll be looking great. All right, everyone, we're back over here. Adrian and I have been working on things. The car is not quite as low as it was. It's actually sitting pretty happy on ride height. We went through and verified everything. We got the canisters mounted right there. So that's looking pretty dang good. You can barely see it, but this is just the other side of the mount. Uh, let's see if I can do this. You guys gonna be able to see it right there. So there's the canister. And then on the shocks back here, I set all my settings. And I just went ahead and used the QA1 on my phone, their little tuning guide that you can find on their website. And I set the low speed bleeds, which are up in here, which are different for the mod shocks. I've never had low speed bleeds and then the high speed bleeds. So I set compression and rebound and I put all the clicks in it and I set it to where, oh, that is super bright. And I went ahead and set it to where I think will be good, pretty neutral in their basic settings with a little bit tighter compression in the rear and a little bit stiffer rebound in the front because I know we're going to be on really good track prep and we want the car to go down and not extend the front end like it had been doing so it still might and which should get the car to go down but then I want to consistently try to tighten up the front and get the rear to extend I think also we're going to put another we're going to drop the bar angle in the car because as you see right now it's sitting pretty flat and we need to move it to where we get a little bit of up angle in the bar so hopefully we can get this thing to extend in the back. So we'll see how this goes. But otherwise, I think that's gonna be it for the shock stall. Shout out to AJ for helping me out. And we're actually gonna work on some more stuff for Texas 2K prep. So if you wanna see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.